In this video, we're going to take a look at how to add and use font-based icons to WPF applications. Now basically these are icons that are embedded in font files. Now you might want to use embedded icons because they are easy and quick to use. So without further delay, let's go to Visual Studio and get to the coding. Here in Visual Studio, I already have a WPF project set up and within the project, I added a font file, font awesome 6 free solid. Now I'll start by selecting this file and right here in the properties panel, I'll set its build action property to resource and the copy to output directory property to copy always. This is an important step because it ensures that when the application is compiled, that this file will be considered as a resource to the application. So I'll go to the main window.xaml file here. And what I'll do is I'll add a stack panel to the grid. And I'll set its orientation to horizontal. So what I'm going to be doing is I'll be adding labels to this stack panel. And each label is going to contain an icon. Now, one thing to note is that embedded icons are referenced using Unicodes. So a single font file may contain up to 200 icons. Now, for you to reference a specific icon, you have to use a Unicode. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get the name of the font defined in this file. Now, sometimes the name of the file and the name of the font might not be the same. So you have to be sure that you have the right name. So to do that, I'm going to open the folder that contains this file. Now here, I'm going to open this file. And here we can see that the font name is Font Awesome 6 Free Solid. Now in this case, the name of the font and the name of the file are exactly the same. So I can simply use this name. So I'll go back to Visual Studio. Now here in Visual Studio, I'm going to add a label to the stack panel. Now on this label, I'm going to specify the font family. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference the font that's defined inside this file. So I'll specify its location. So I'll say it's in the root of the application. Then I'll use the hashtag character and then specify the font name. Now at this point, I now want to specify an icon to use on this label. So I'll set its content property. Now here I need to specify a Unicode, which is now going to reference the icon that's specified in this font file. Now for me to do that, I'll go to the documentation of this font, which is font awesome. All right, now here we can see a bunch of fonts defined. So what I'm going to do is I'll just pick one. So I'll pick the bomb. Now here we can choose a number of different formats. We can choose HTML, React, Vue, etc. Now what I'm interested in is this Unicode, which is F1E2. So I'll click on it to copy and I'll go back to Visual Studio. Now here in Visual Studio, I'm going to specify that Unicode. Now one thing to note is that when specifying a Unicode, you have to prefix it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the AND character, the hash character, then X. Then I'm going to close it with a colon, with a semicolon rather. So this is how you define a Unicode. Now notice here in the designer that we now see a rectangle. So this is specifying that there's an icon or there's a character that wants to be displayed. Now apparently the designer won't show us anything. Now what I can do to increase the size is to simply increase the font size. So in this case I'm going to set it to 32. All right and I'll copy and paste this label. Now I'll go back to the reference of the awesome font. 
Now here I'm going to pick another icon. In this case I'll pick the cloud. And I'll copy the Unicode. Then here in Visual Studio, I'm only going to change this. So I'll paste that. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the application and see the results. All right. Now the application is up and running and you can see that we have two different icons. So we are getting these icons from the font file. So using embedded fonts is quite simple and easy and it actually speeds up the design process. So that's it for today's video. Remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. I'll see you in the next one.